Dan Perry here with another C++ tutorial for Dan on Tech. In this video we'll continue to look at math functions <coughs> and specifically we'll look at the floor and ceiling functions. The floor and ceiling functions allow us to essentially do a rounding. It's not truly a rounding because it's not rounding to the next highest or next lowest. Uh, you can think of it more as either moving it up to the next number, larger number in the case of the ceiling, or down to the next smaller number in case of the floor function. So in order to use those functions, I've gotten a, got a couple of variables. I've got a um, value of 3.2 for my x variable, uh, minus 2.1 for my y variable, and we'll just look at what the results are of using the floor and ceiling functions on each of those. So if we do floor of x, <clears throat> and then look at the floor function there, and we'll see that... Uh, it's F-L-O-O-R, and then in our parentheses, our variable or constant for that matter, and I'll use X. Uh, X is 3.2 in this case. And let's also look at the floor of the Y value. So let me copy this and change this for Y. And Y is a negative number, a negative 2.1. So if we look at the results, what we'll find is that, uh, let me go ahead and add some indels here so it is, uh, looks a little better, easier to read. What we're going to see is the floor function takes an brings those values to the next smallest integer value. <clears throat> so in the case of the floor of x, since x had a value of 3.2, the next smallest integer was 3. So we end up with a value of 3 for x. Now, y had a value of negative 2.1. <clears throat> well, it's not the next smallest integer, it's the one that's more, I guess you can say, negative, or if you think of a negative, larger absolute value of a negative number being a smaller value, since this was negative, the next smaller value would not be a negative 2, but would be a negative 3, and that's what we got with the floor function, the next smaller value. So... If we now look at the ceiling function, and with the ceiling function, you don't type the whole word ceiling. It's just C-E-I-L, C-E-I-L, and um, actually, I, that's not the one I wanted to change. The ceiling function of x will give the next larger value. And the same thing if we do that with y, where it's the next larger integer value. So let's run this one. And you can see here the ceiling of 3.2 is 4. And the ceiling of minus 2.1 is minus 2. So it's the next larger integer value in both cases. So the floor and ceiling functions will give you the ability to get the next larger or smaller integer. Now what it does not do is it does not truly round. So how could we use this for rounding? Normally we round whenever a number is uh, greater than one half. So if we were to, <coughs> excuse me, 
if we were wanted, wanting to round to the nearest value, what we could do is we can take the floor of a value. So let me copy this floor line. And if I add a half to that value, so 0.5, and then take the floor of it, so x plus 0.5, and run it, run our program, well, it still tells me that the floor of that is 3, or, and if you would round 3.2 off, uh, to the nearest integer, you would end up with what? You'd end up with 3. Well, let's say that was 3.6 instead. Well, if we've got a value of 3.6 and we run it, now just the floor and the ceiling value did not change in, in that case, but now notice that the floor plus, plus a half is what? It's 4. Well, that has rounded up to the nearest integer because by adding a half, if the number is greater than a half, then what's it going to do? It's going to add a half. When you add a half to it, it'll be the next integer up. So 3.5 plus 0.5 would give us 4, and the floor of 4 is 4. So that's a way we can round to the nearest integer using the floor function. Uh, just remember to add a half to it. Thank you for watching this Dan on Tech video. Please subscribe to this playlist so you don't miss future videos. Please check out and subscribe to our other Dan on Tech channel playlists.